If you're new to learning Blender, or maybe you've been using Blender for a while, but you're not making as much progress as you'd like, this video is probably for you. I've had a lot of questions over the years from people who want to know the best strategy for learning Blender, not just specific tutorial tips and skills, but the overarching strategy of what's the best way to learn from beginner level all the way to intermediate or even to professional levels. So I thought I would just sit down today and talk about my views on the best way that you can go about learning Blender if you know nothing about the program at all and you've never used 3D software. So first up, let's talk about tutorials. I get a lot of people asking me which tutorials they should watch, which ones I watch, and I also see a lot of people questioning whether it's even worth watching tutorials in the first place. Some people say, oh, I don't really learn like that. I just like to figure it out by myself. So firstly, yes, you definitely should be watching tutorials, especially if you're a complete beginner and you've never used another 3D package. You basically have to use them. This isn't like Microsoft Paint. This isn't like a word processing program. You can't just figure this out by yourself, at least not easily. These are some of the most complex programs ever made. Blender, I've been using it for six years now and I use it every day and I find something new that Blender could do every week, right? So yes, you should be watching the tutorials. Which tutorials should you watch? Well, honestly, all of them. I watch as many tutorials as I can. I have a second screen and quite often when I'm working, I'll just have either a live stream of someone else working in Blender or I'll have a tutorial up. You don't necessarily have to follow all these tutorials. You don't have to recreate what they did. You're gonna learn a lot just through osmosis, just by watching these things. So watch as many tutorials as you can. Find all of the good channels. I'll leave a bunch of recommendations in the comments or something like that. But there's plenty of good channels out there making really good content. Watch as much of it as you possibly can. So which tutorials would I recommend to beginners? Well, most people start with Andrew Price's Donut Tutorials, which you'll find on the Blender Guru channel on YouTube. It's a starting point for a hell of a lot of people in this community. And there's a good reason for that. It's just a really good series of videos. He regularly goes through every time there's a big change to Blender, he updates it so it's always relevant to the latest version of Blender. And he makes it a little bit better every time. If you follow that tutorial series, you'll end up with a nice looking donut. But more importantly, you'll learn all the basic tools that you're gonna be using constantly in Blender. If you don't like that series for some reason, then Zach Reinhardt over at CG Boost and Steve at CG Geek both have good beginner series as well. Those videos are a little bit older though, so they might be a little bit out of date here and there, but overall they're very good videos. After that, I would recommend Grant Abbott's channel. He has a good series called, I think, Get Good at Blender, which is what I was gonna call this video. I'm gonna have to rename this. It's called Get Good at Blender or something like that. And he goes through a lot of the basic stuff in Blender, the really helpful videos, I've watched a couple of them and I would definitely recommend those too. My next piece of advice is to stay out of your comfort zone. The comfort zone is where progress goes to die. As long as though you're not pushing yourself, you're not learning anything new. I used to be an illustrator and there's something I've always called painting mountains. That's where you learn how to paint like a mountainscape and you get decently good at it and that's all you do. And I did this for a while. I did this for like a year and a half. Every time I paint something, I'd paint some mountains. I'd put some dramatic lighting, a guy with a stick in the foreground. And you think, oh yeah, that looks good. And then you compare it to everything else you've done recently and it all looks the same. You're not actually making any progress there. And it's the same in Blender. If you're constantly just trying to do the things you've already learned, then you're not gonna learn anything else. So like, yes, it's good to reiterate on the skills you've already learned. It's good to practice things that you know how to do at least a few times so the information goes in your head. But then you need to move on. You need to push yourself to do other things. Kind of building on the last point, I would also say don't specialize too soon. A lot of people come into a program like Blender and they have a specific project that they want to make in mind or they have a role that they want to do in the future. I want to be a texture artist. I want to be an animator. I wanna be a character sculptor. The problem is if you start only learning one skill right from the start, then you're really limiting how good your art can be. All of the guys I know who are really good specialists are also good or at least competent at a lot of other things. I know guys who are great sculptors, but they also have nice materials, they have nice texture work. 
they can model, they can light scenes. If you're trying to get a job, especially in the future, you're going to have to know how to present your work. And most of the time, studios, especially small studios, they're going to expect that you know at least what the rest of the workflow looks like. They're going to expect that you kind of know what everybody else's job is, even if you're not really that good at it. So I would say for the first year or so that you use Blender, don't specialize too much on one area. Try to learn a little bit of everything. And then once you know what you like, you can start to really focus in on that thing. Before I move on to the next tips, I want to take a minute to talk about the sponsor of this video, Filmora by Wondershare. Filmora 12 is a fantastic editing suite with all the titles and video effects that you need to help your videos go viral. You may have noticed in the past that I rarely use title screens in my videos because I haven't really found a good option for creating professional titles until now. Filmora has a vast range of professional looking presets that can be endlessly customized to suit the look of your projects. It comes with a library of over 130 font options, the largest default library of any video editor. And you can fully control the look of all these fonts with scale, color and orientation options for every one. I particularly like the various text animation styles. Filmora also has an excellent suite of preset video effects, which can be used to take your work to the next level. It comes with some lighthearted effects like stickers, which are great for social media, but it also has some extremely useful tools for 3D artists. I was really impressed with the AI portrait feature, which automatically removes people from the background of a shot without any need for a green screen or manual rotoscoping. I love the transition effects too that come with Filmora, especially the shake and fisheye roll transitions. Finally, it has professional quality particle systems and post effects that come from plugins such as Boris FX and New Blue. Check out the link in the description to download Filmora 12 today and start leveling up your title and video effects. The next thing that I want beginners to be aware of when they jump into Blender is that it is a technical skill, but it's also an art skill. Just because you know what all of the buttons do and how Blender functions, doesn't necessarily mean you're going to be a good artist. You also have to put in the work you need to practice. Everybody just takes this for granted with any other skill. If I teach you how to draw, I can teach you that in five minutes, the technical part of drawing. You just, you put the pencil on the paper, it's not hard. But you wouldn't expect to be good at drawing right off the bat. You would expect to have to put the work in. It's exactly the same with Blender. You're going to have to practice. You're going to have to put in the time. Personally, I think the more time that you can put into Blender at the start, the better it's going to be. It's a lot like learning to drive a car. You can do an intense driving course in like a week and learn to drive a car. But if you have your lessons like every two weeks, it's going to take much longer to do it in terms of how many hours you've put in because you're going to spend the first half of the lesson just reiterating what you did the last week. So building on my last point, I think it's really important that any 3D artist learns the fundamentals of art. That's things like perspective, lighting, and composition. Now, luckily, as 3D artists, we don't have to worry about perspective very often because the program does that for us. But we do have to know about all the other stuff. There's a lot of good resources for learning art fundamentals. We've known about this stuff and built up this knowledge for hundreds of years. So there's some good online resources. Um, Marco Bucci's channel is excellent for art fundamentals. There's also a lot of good offline stuff as well. You can pick up some really good books on the subject. Um, I have a lot of stuff like, like this, Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. You wouldn't think it would be applicable to 3D art, but a lot of this is about just composition and things that are actually very helpful to any artist. And I mean, this, this book was fairly cheap because it's like 65 years old. I also have stuff like the animators survival guide, which is all about like traditional 2d hand-drawn animation. But a lot of this stuff applies to 3d animation too. So you definitely need to learn the art fundamentals. I think there's no question about that. When I was first learning Blender, one thing that I did was I set myself a fairly ambitious project, something that I knew would require me to learn some new skills and something that would probably take two to four weeks. And then I worked on that until it was completed. Every single project that I did after that, I tried to add something new to my skill set. So this was the first full project that I finished in Blender. I'd only made a handful of things in Blender before this, including the core can that you can see on the desk there. 
I think interior scenes like this are a good starting point because if you get stuck on something, you can always change it out with something else. If I couldn't figure out how to model the chair, I could have used a different chair. Same with the lamp, I could have used a different lamp or replaced it entirely. If I couldn't figure out the shoes, I could have just got rid of the shoes. What I was talking about earlier with watching lots of tutorials, the bin in the corner, I only knew how to make that because I'd watched some random video about how to make a microphone, like the mesh on the top of a microphone. So that's a perfect example of what I was talking about where you should be watching tutorials even if you're not actually planning to make the thing you're watching because you will pick up other skills. Okay, so coming off that project, I wanted to try something that was a lot older. Instead of having very modern furniture, I wanted a lot of stone and wood. I was also trying to figure out the hair particle system, which I'd never used before, and I used that for the rugs. And this was the first time I ever did any sort of uh, volume effects for the fire. Now, one thing I thought that this scene was missing was that I didn't have any volumetric light coming through on the window. So the next thing that I worked on, I tried to add a little bit of volumetrics into here. I also concentrated a little bit on my uh, compositing work. You can see there's a little bit of lens distortion and things going on. And I tried to do, really increase the level of detail that I was putting in. So I've got things like cobwebs on the windows and just small little details that I wouldn't have included before because I was feeling a little bit more confident with my skills. This next piece, the goal of the project was to work on sculpting and texturing and hand painting in details. I hadn't done any of that stuff before, so I made this purposely just so I could practice those skills. Then I made this thing. It was the first time that I'd focused on just one prop and it was also the first out outdoor shot that I did. This was a still life. I really wanted to hone in how well I could do details on like a close up of something and I was also working a little bit more on getting better at materials. And then this scene is basically just an expanded version of the last one. I was taking the skills I had learnt on how to make liquids and things and how to do better uh, small details. For instance, you can see there's a, a watermark on the table. I was trying to figure out how to do just these little extra touches to really level up the work. This was actually a project that I made in the middle of some of those earlier projects and I only just finished it at this point. I think the main limitation here was the fact that my computer was really limited at the time and this was a dark shot with lots of bounce lighting so it was just really noisy. So I hope that demonstrates my point pretty clearly that the goal, at least for me, was to always take something I didn't know how to do and then build a scene around that idea. If I wanted to learn how to do particle effects, I would think up a project that I knew would require me to do particle effects. Then I would try and do particles in the next couple of scenes to really cement my understanding before I moved on to something else, while also adding in other little skills along the way. That process might not work for everybody. Some people prefer to work on smaller projects, something that'll take a day or two and then just constantly move on. But I think that was the fastest way to learn, at least for me. One piece of advice that I give every beginner, no matter what your learning style is, is to open up a notepad file, call it shortcuts, and whenever you learn a new shortcut that seems particularly useful, write it down and write what, a description of what it does. Once you've got the muscle memory for it and you don't need to keep referring to the notepad file, delete it. Not the whole file, just that shortcut. Blender is an extremely heavy shortcut program. I've never used a program before that has as many shortcuts and it can get a bit overwhelming, especially like back in the day, there used to be a shortcut. I think it was control alt shift C to do something that you do all the time, like change the origin point. So yeah, it can get pretty overwhelming and I figured out very early on in my use of Blender, it's a good idea to have a list of all the ones you're going to use all the time. You'll pick up the basic stuff straight away. I don't even know what a lot of the shortcuts are. It's just, it's literally muscle memory now. If you ask me how to do these things, I would have to like sit at the keyboard and figure out what I would normally press. You'll get there eventually. Some people have made like a uh, infographics where it shows you every single one. There's no need for that. You, you can't understand those things. 
This next point might be a little bit controversial. I know some people have very strong feelings about this, but I'm going to say for the first year or so that you're learning Blender, don't use other people's assets, at least not often. Don't download things from BlendSwap or Sketchfab or, or Patreon or wherever you like to get things from. Build your own stuff. Build your own stuff as much as you possibly can. If you look through those examples from earlier on of my my journey, the first year or two of learning Blender, all of those assets were made by me and some of them aren't great, but that's kind of the point. Every, every time that I made something, I was learning new things. The problem that I have with using other people's assets isn't from a moral point of view or anything. Like if you watch my videos, I use other people's assets all of the time. Some of my videos are full of other people's 3D models. Uh, I have no problem with that. It's just, it's, it's a crutch. And when you don't know how to make these things yourself, it's a really bad habit to constantly be relying on other people to do the work for you because you're going to get to the point eventually where you're not going to be able to find the model you want, especially as your projects get more ambitious. You're going to be like, okay, well, I need a specific fighter jet or something. And then you're going to look on the internet and the only model you'll find is either rubbish or like $500 or they just won't be the model you want there. And if you've never tried to model anything like a fire jet before, what do you do now? You're not actually learning anything if you're just constantly plucking out other people's, other people's assets and putting them in the scene together. You need to be able to figure out how to do this stuff yourself. Once you get to the point where you're comfortable with 3D modeling, go nuts, use people's assets as much as you like. As long as all you have their permission and you have the rights to use, them, go for it. So my final piece of advice for any aspiring Blender artist is to join the community. Blender has one of the biggest, most fantastic communities that I've ever been involved with on the internet. And I'm not saying get involved with that just in like a let's hold hands and sing come by our way. It's actually a really, really effective resource when you're learning Blender. There's like so many tutorials being posted. There's news about Blender. There's discussions about best practices and what things can be can be done to improve Blender. There's so much help out there. People are willing to give their time to help people out with problems. I mean, one of the most frustrating things about learning Blender is just learning Blender. Like until you know what the problem is, you don't even know necessarily if it is a problem. It's so nice to be able to go onto a forum or something and just say, look, this is my issue. Does anybody know what's going on? 90% of the time you're going to get an answer straight away like, oh yeah, it's this, just do this thing. That's much better than spending like four hours looking for tutorials on YouTube and you don't even know the search terms that you should be using. So where can you find the community? Well, a lot of us hang out on Twitter, uh, although a few less recently. But if you search for hashtag B3D, you can find loads of artists. There's lots of creators like me who tend to make these like long almost like tutorial threads where we talk about topics in 3D. Like I made one a while back all about Engons. If you don't know what an Engon is, don't worry about it. Um, on Instagram, if you search for B3D as well, you'll find lots of artists posting work and there's lots of tutorials on there too. There's uh, Blender Artists, which is a good website with a great forum for help and things. There's uh, Blender Nation that has a lot of good news about Blender and tutorials. There's uh, Blender.community, which is uh, kind of run by some of the Blender guys and people discuss proposals about what should be in Blender. And there's a lot of help and stuff there too. Um, also on Reddit, there's three good subreddits that I know of. That's Blender, Blender Help and Blender Tutorials. So if you go into any of those spaces and you have an issue or something you need help with, you're probably going to get it. They're a pretty good bunch of guys and girls in the community overall and so that's it guys that's pretty much everything i think any aspiring blender artist should definitely know if you can think of anything else please leave it in the comments i would love to hear people's thoughts on best practices when you learn in blender thanks very much to filmora wondershare for sponsoring this video make sure you check out the link in the description and i'll catch you guys in a day or two with another video